Hello, and welcome to another episode of 20th Century Adventures with Nathan Logsdon. Today we're going to talk about taking an ordinary wool felt cowboy hat that you might find at a thrift store for a couple of bucks, and we're going to turn that into a period correct early 20th century Montana peak hat. These hats were very popular and will fit just about any impression in the early 20th century. We're going to show you how to do this right here, right now. Now this is really simple, it's not much to it, but there's a couple of things that you're going to need. You're going to need something to put some hot water in. Uh, we're using a nice little original shaving basin here, uh, but seriously anything will work. Uh, you're going to need an iron. It doesn't have to be a period iron. You can use your electric iron, uh, but we're going to do this. Uh, you'll need something like a seam ripper or a sharp knife. Uh, just be very careful not to cut the wool felt when you're taking off the band. Um, and then I recommend a towel uh, laid down when you iron the hat. And uh, I like to use a dark colored towel because oftentimes a little bit of dye from the hat uh, seeps out onto a lighter colored towel. So if it's a dark towel, it won't matter. So first order of business here is we have to get rid of this very modern hat band that has the, the conchos on it. So this is just stitched down. Sometimes they're glued on, which is more problematic. Um, but this one, it looks like it has faded a little bit underneath of it. So we may want to go back later on and add a, uh, a different band onto it to cover that up. But that's really easy. So we're done with that. Now there's a little bit of threads and things in here. You want to try to get those out, just makes it cleaner, makes it neater. Uh, so we'll pick some of those out here. Looks like it had some feathers in it at one time. We'll get those out. All right, and now we have a really good basis for a much better period hat. Now this is actually a, a genuine fur felt 5X uh, hat. It's not a Stetson, but it looks similar to one. I've seen, I've used Stetsons before. In fact, I think this one started out as a Stetson. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take and get rid of uh, this shape, and we're going to give it a more period shape. So first thing we're going to need is we're going to need some hot water. Okay, so this doesn't have to be really boiling hot. You want it pretty hot. Um, as we know, the wool shrinks in hot water. Uh, really, it shrinks more as it dries, uh, if it dries hot. So um, we're going to pour a little bit of water in here. The water's a little bit brown because I also used this pot for coffee not too long ago. All right, so what we want to do is we want to get the crown, the top of this hat, down into that water. And we're going to kind of work it a little bit here. See, that's nice and soaked. That's good, that's good. Now you just want to push those creases that were put into that hat out. It's nice and pliable now. It starts with a, as a real stiff hat, and then it becomes very pliable once you get it hot and wet. And the hot water soaks in a lot better than cold water does. All right, so now we've got a pretty good shape here. Move this out of the way. <clears throat> and really, all you have to do at this point is you just have to shape what you want it to look like now. So we're going to put indentations here and some indentations here. You kind of just work it into place, make it the way you want it to look. We've kind of got a funky crease going on here. We're going to try and get that out. You can see right there it wanted to kind of make an S curve. We don't want that. All right. Now we've totally changed the character of this hat. And really at this point all that needs to be done is this needs to dry. So that's really simple. Now, if we wanted to shape the brim any, which this one doesn't really necessarily need, 
Uh, but if we were going to shape the brim, we'd get that brim wet too with the hot water. That's still good and hot too. It's a little chilly out here today, but this water is pretty hot. So it's doing the job. All right. So you would start by flattening out the brim. I'm going to have to go get some uh, coals in my iron here, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got some coals. Uh, see how this little puppy works. I'm trying to burn my table while I'm at it. Set that on a trivet so we can burn the table. I'm just gonna let that warm up for a minute. Okay, I think we're hot enough now. And so we're just gonna run that iron around the edge of this hat. It's working nicely. Now what this does is it helps shrink up some of that wool and it stiffens the brim considerably. So if you've got a hat that's kind of got a floppy brim, it'll shape that up real well by just doing this around the edge. And this is why we put the towel down kind of keeps you from picking up anything that might be on your table and getting that on your hat. Often I have candle wax on my tables from living history. Uh, and then also it keeps the hat from bleeding onto the table uh, and a dark towel keeps from uh, staining your wife's good kitchen towels. Okay, so uh, that's, that's nice and stiff and it's uh, straightened out all the little wobbly bits in the hat. Now if we wanted to shape this a little bit we could curl these edges some and you determine which is the front. It's usually a seam in the back there and so you might bend it down a little bit in the front. What that does is that helps rain drip off. If you're out in the rainstorm that rain will run off instead of collecting on the hat as much. You put a little downturn in the back too. Make sure that when you put your curl on the sides, you're making it nice and symmetrical with your Montana Peak up here. And that's what we want right there. <clears throat> now, let's say that you've got a hat that is just a little bit too small and you want to make it bigger. Well, first you've got to get rid of this band inside. And those are usually stitched in if it's a good hat. If it's glued in, well, that's a little more problematic. But this one, we can just pull right out of there. This is the only step that requires something that you might not ordinarily have at home. This requires a hat block. Now you can make a hat block out of a piece of wood if you've got some skills and some tools. Uh, or I've done it with a glass bowl. Um, it doesn't work quite as well, but you can do it with a glass bowl. You can do it with um, plastic Tupperware. That's really the most difficult way to do it. Um, so what we need to do is we need to get the, the actual crown here uh, wet so that we can do some shaping on it. It's got a lot of threads in there. Good to try to pull those out. <clears throat> so let's see. I should have used a bigger pan. Let's just uh, let's just see if we can pour it on there. but we've still got still got to get that hat sweatband area 
There we go. Let's get down there. Generally, if you were going to resize a hat, you would do that before you do all your other shaping. So we may have to go back and reshape our hat after this. Now this is an antique hat block. You can find these places. Uh, a lot of antique stores will have them and stuff like that. Various sizes. You need one for whatever size you're going to make. Um, so this one is a, uh, let's see, this is a 21 and a half inch. So that's really not much different than the hat that we've got here. Um, but it's the only one I could find offhand. So that may not give us too much to work with. But, um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to actually stretch this fiber. And it's just felt, so it's not woven, it's felted together. And so you can actually spread it apart. You want to be careful not to rip it, but these can take quite a beating, really. And I'm just I'm pulling on that. It takes a lot of strength to do it, but I'm spreading that out as I go around. Okay, and then you would ordinarily finish this with a hat block. This block's a little small for what we're doing, um, but we can make it work. So you get in there, the iron's getting a little cool, but not too bad. And you iron it against the block. And this is why it's good to have a block that's the right size, because then it just kind of shrinks to that size really meshes to the to the hat block. You almost have to peel them off when they're done right. I wish I could have found a bigger block. Now it's a lot wetter on the inside than it is on the outside, but our iron is doing a pretty good job of pulling that moisture from the inside through it, which is exactly what you want to have happen. Okay. There. Now we'll kind of touch up our peak a little bit. Make sure we're happy with it. We might touch up this brim a little bit now that we've done all that stretching. It's kind of curved on us. We don't want that. Plus we got it wet again. That's why you want to start with the resizing. Touch up that the sides. Get that where I want it. Fix our brim. And there we go. Now, all you have to do is let that dry. And it'll take about, uh, you know, 24 hours, maybe a little bit more for it to completely dry inside. Um, it, if you're really wanting to make it fit your head well, uh, let it dry for about six or seven hours and then put it on and wear it, if you can, wear it all day um, until it dries on your head. And if you do that, it'll shape to the actual shape of your head as opposed to uh, just being a general shape that you have to break in. Uh, so if you want a hat that feels like it's been broken in and worn forever, uh, that's a good way to get a hat to feel really, really good. Well, I hope you found this video to be useful and informative. Uh, maybe you can go out now and make your own Montana Peak hat. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. We'll be doing more in the future, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.
luck coming in to the one is mine. I've been wondering who I am to blame for making the bacon and the brawn. And the can of milk and the beef steak pie when they're missing on a Sunday morn. Has anybody seen our cat? Has anybody cat. seen our cat? Get out of the Got a bit of black on the end of a tail and skin all up where he's been fighting last Sunday morning.